Chapter 33, Return. A slash N, please, guys, this is an anime fanfiction that uses cultivation lower levels as a reference to strength. I may be using immortal cultivation terms here but this will be his peak. As a soul formation cultivator, one can freely travel outer space and even live 300,000 years normally, but I didn't say that here cause, what's the point? Please don't look forward to any Dao bullshit. He has control over every element, Kekai Genkai, Truth Seeking Orb, and to top it all off, Yin Yang Release, Creation of All Things. Right now he could even go to any pantheon and still be treated as an all-father of gods. So, please, let's just enjoy the process and not the endpoint. Thanks. Join my Patreon page at patreon.com slash joshrichie. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Sensing the teleportation seal I placed on the outskirts of the village, I disappeared in a white flash and appeared just a few miles away from the village. Taking large steps toward the village, I arrived less than a minute later. My casual steps now could already cover miles. This should be due to my power level now. I feel like if I lit enough pressure, I could jump into the atmosphere. I could also now float. In general, my body could now be called one with nature. I only need to urge the energy in the atmosphere and I could move at a speed faster than lightning. Arriving at the entrance of the village, I notice it is overly lively, and there seem to be signs of celebration. Either Ashura just came back or he has already been appointed successor. If it is the former then that is good but if it is the latter then we will have a lot on our hands tonight. I entered the village with large steps but I wasn't using any energy this time around. I was just walking normally. It didn't take time before everyone started to recognize me. Yo, if it isn't Shun, you're back. Oh Shun is back. He must be back for his brother's celebration party. Now, nah, it should be coincidental, how do you expect him to know that the selection will be a year from now? Yeah, it must be a coincidence. Hey guys, it's been a while. How have you all been doing? I greeted them back with a happy smile. I wasn't wearing my blindfold this time around so my smile brought out my full handsomeness. A lot of villagers who recognized me came to welcome me and I greeted them back, they were all beaming with joyful smiles on their faces. I guess they really are happy that Ashura will be the successor. They might have voiced it out previously for fear of angering Indra but it is now obvious the whole village loves Ashura. I also noticed a lot of new faces in the village. More than 50 from their chakra presence. I could also now confirm that with my enhanced senses, I developed a kind of empathy. So far I have been feeling joyful emotions from the people I have met and focused my senses on. After walking for some time and greeting the people I met on the way, I finally arrived home. I didn't feel Indra's chakra in the village but I felt Ashura's together with a group of people I don't. Recognize their chakra. Must be his new friends. Not minding them, I went towards the meeting hall where Hagoromo is most of the time. When I reached the door, he heard Hagoromo and a voice that is supposed to be Atami talking. I didn't bother eavesdropping as that would be rude and he would be caught. I could hide my presence with natural energy but this is Hagoromo we are talking about here so I didn't bother. Knocking lightly on the door, I pushed the door open and walked in, they both looked at me. Hagoromo looked mildly surprised when he looked at me but that was all. Either he expected it or he just doesn't care as long as I am not evil. I wonder how that toad will feel when he sees me now. Will he make another bullshit prophecy or still the same old one? Now that I think about it clearly, how did he even know that a blue-eyed youth will be the savior of the world? If it was before, I would have dismissed it as anime logic but now, I am mildly interested. Guess I'll ask about it when I go to their sacred la it's not like he can get any stronger than me. Yo pops, Itami-san, I just returned and I see a whole lot of new faces around here. Plus the festive atmosphere. What's going on? Have you finally chosen your successor? Who is it? I asked in one breath while walking towards a sitting mat in front of Hagoromo. Nice to have you back, Shun. I would like to hear more about your travels but since you asked, it would have to wait. 
As for what is going on, Ashura came back from his quest and he performed splendidly. I decided to make him my successor. His actions in the village inspired even me and taught me something new. I would like to hear your opinion on the matter. Take a look at this report and tell me what you think. He said before passing a scroll to me. I picked up the scroll and opened it. Inside was the report on how Ashura performed his quest, the decisions he made, the approach he took, and the result of his actions on the village. Even though I already knew all this from the anime, reading it firsthand also has a special kind of feeling it gives. After I was done reading I handed it back to him. He then handed me another scroll which was Indra's report on his quest. I already know what he did in the village but I still opened up the scroll to see it from his point of view. In the scroll was his action concerning the already stated problem inflicting the village. His report states that he attempted to solve the issue by himself as the villagers were too weak to be of any service to him. Indra didn't have the patience to pull them through the issue so he did everything himself. In the village he went to, the land had been sucked dry by a branch of the god tree nearby and they didn't have any other source of food and water. The land was dry and there was no water channel. Unlike Ashura who appealed to the villagers and later won their hearts and gained their help, Indra didn't bother about the villagers' help or emotions. With his ninjutsu, he made a lake for them and also watered the land and left it like that. While reading this, my mouth involuntarily twitched. Any sensible person would know that this is not the way to solve the issue. If Indra remained there as their source of water, it would be understandable. Instead, he gave them a short-term solution instead of Ashura's long-term solution. Both their quests were fundamentally different but they still had one thing in common which was to help the villagers. If I am being fair, Ashura won this quest flawlessly while Indra has to reflect on himself. If not because I know that this part of the lot is important, I would have really gone to beat a little sense into Indra, but alas. After placing the scroll down, I took a deep breath and said my true thoughts on the matter. In all fairness, Ashura's way of handling the problem facing the village was admirable while Indra's method has a way to go. Ashura gave the village a long-term solution while Indra gave them a short-term solution. I still wouldn't choose between the two as I feel like you know better than me what you want from your successor. I finished. Now it doesn't matter what I say. I want to remain true to what was a year ago. I don't want to choose between them and even if I said I choose Indra, Hagoromo will still choose Ashura. Hagoromo nodded sagely and didn't say anything else concerning the issue. He then asked me about my experiences outside. I started to recount everything that happened after I left the village. I didn't hide anything and told him how I used clones to explore parts of the land and also the people I met. I also told him about the Shikatsu forest and what I learned from Katsuyu about other sage lands. I didn't tell him about the chakra tree branches though. I also told him about my experience with the seven chakra gates and where they are located and everything I passed through after opening all of them. I didn't mention my dimension though but I did tell him that I have achieved the sage body which he nodded, not surprised at all. I guess that's why he looked a little surprised when he came into the room. When I was done recounting my experiences, it was already evening and the festival was already in its beginning stages. I also heard from Hagoromo that he has already chosen Ashura to be his successor, which means a few hours from now, Indra would kill his two lackeys and awaken both the Manjikyu Sharingan and Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan. He would then attack the village. Knowing all these, I would be a bad brother if I didn't meet and congratulate Ashura before his inauguration. I met Ashura with some of his friends from the village he went to. I noticed that he and a girl named Kanna were quite close and if I am not mistaken, she will be his wife. Yo Ashura. Longest time. Ah. Shun. How are you? I've not seen you for a whole year. He said while approaching me for a hug. I hugged him for a while before we separated. I looked around and noticed the curious gazes directed at me. I waved at them and introduced myself. Hey, I'm Ashura's brother in all but blood. The name's Shun. They then introduced themselves. We discussed for a while Tol Ashura was called by Hagoromo. 
I knew it was time he passed his six paths and jutsa to him and soon Indra would be coming. I repressed my every chakra and waited for the first battle between brothers. I could save this scene forever in my mind and show it to reincarnations if I felt like it. Another reason I want to hide properly is to find Zetsu and have a nice conversation with him. I felt Indra's presence near the village and knew the moment was fast approaching. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Join my Patreon page at patreon.com slash joshrichi. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Chapter 34, Brothers Fight Thoughts Speech Technique Let me try this out for this chapter. Tell me your thoughts on it. Join my Patreon page at patreon.com slash joshrichi. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Shun could feel Indra's chakra coming towards the village. It was in a state of excitement. It was boiling so to say. It could only be the effects of excited emotions or the effect of the upgrade in his chakra quality. The village was still quiet and calm as they didn't know the danger approaching them. As Indra neared the village, Shun looked up to the sky. Turns out Indra wasn't walking in, he was flying in. As Indra landed, the tremor generated by the fall alerted everyone in the village and they all scrambled toward the village gate. Ashura and Hagaromo rushed toward the gate. Reaching there, they both saw Kanna, the girl who came along with Ashura from the village he went to on the quest. Kanna, are you alright? Ashura asked. Yes, she replied. Ashura used healing palm jutsu to quickly heal her injuries. Noticing the source of the tremor, Ashura and Hagaromo ran toward it. Reaching there, he exclaimed seeing the source. Elder brother. Not bothering to acknowledge them both, Indra said. Why? Why didn't you choose me as your successor? Is it because of the task? I gave them everything they needed. But ultimately, the villagers ended up relying on my power too much. Looking at his palm like a classic villain who just realized the right way to go about things, he continued. I didn't do anything wrong, can use my power and establish total order. At this point, Hagaromo decided to intervene. Those with power must never forget the human heart. With power comes the responsibility of helping those in need. The villagers were solemnly looking at what was transpiring. The amount of aura coming from the chakra Indra was emanating came with a terrifying pressure that they couldn't bear. People will not support a governance through fear Indra. Foolish Indra muttered. This is a foolish way of thinking. What is the point of power if you cannot use it to govern those weaklings? I cannot be like them. Indra said the last part while flaring his chakra. His fully matured Manjikyu Sharingan or eternal Manjikyu Sharingan at this point became visible. Indra, your Sharingan, Hagaromo exclaimed in surprise. Elder brother, please stop, I don't want to fight you, Mashura said. Without bothering to even reply, Indra made a hand sign and a huge amount of lightning chakra was accumulated and thrown towards Ashura. Ashura didn't stand idly by. Cupping his hands, he created some balls of chakra and used them to match Indra's incoming lightning ball. What? Indra shouts in surprise. Shun, who was watching the show nearby, also showed a trace of surprise on his face. Seeing it in the anime and seeing it in real life is so different, Shun thought. I didn't even know when he learned this. Nice going Ashura. When the lightning and Amanomi Hashira collided, it generated a lot of dust clouds but surprisingly, the Amanomi Hashira overpowered the lightning jutsu and hit Indra. But this is not enough to defeat me, Indra said while showing his full body Susanu. Damn. All the way to the full body? This guy didn't even build up the chakra. Shun thought gobsmacked while watching the fight. Here I come, he said before stomping on Ashura. Ashura managed to evade the leg on time but was on his ass on the ground. From behind Ashura, a ball of fire, water, and wind landed on Indra's Susanu. Every joined forces Hagaromo urged the villagers. 
The villagers watching the fight all started shooting various elemental attacks at Indra's Susanu. Surprisingly, their chakra has all passed the gaseous form. If not for Indra's Susanu, they would be able to slightly overpower him. They all have at least Kage level strength shun thought. It's all futile efforts though. With a slash of his Susanu blade, Indra destroys all incoming attacks. The force from the swing goes on to cut into the village, creating a huge ravine. The powerless can band together but it all means nothing in the face of true power, Indra says while looking over at Ashura. He then swings his blade at Ashura while shouting, it's over. Elder brother Ashura shouts. As the blade landed on the spot Ashura was standing, the force from the swing destroyed what was left of the village while generating dust clouds. Hagoromo was protecting the villagers with his truth-seeking orb, in the form of a dome. Shun, who was watching nearby, was shocked at the turn of events. Didn't his advice change anything? Is this fate or is something at work here? He didn't know what to think. But he was both shocked, angry, and disappointed. Since Hagoromo didn't bother to defend Ashura, Shun didn't bother to, as Ashura already possessed Hagoromo's Yang Six Path Senjutsu. Indra's blade was blocked by Ashura's rod, created from two of the eight truth-seeking orbs floating behind him. Seeing that one of his blades has been stopped, Indra swung his second blade at Ashura. The force and weight from the blade push Ashura into the ground. Trying to withstand the weight from the blade and trying to stand up, he suddenly feels the combined chakra from everyone in the village on his shoulder. Turn out that Hagoromo gathered everyone in a circle and with hands joined together, they transferred their combined chakra to Ashura. Wow, what a spectacle. I almost wish I could join was what Shun was thinking. Hmm. My clone is back, guess he managed to find him huh? That's by the way. I need to find a way to create an avatar for battle. Indra has the Susanu, and Ashura has the true several hands. I wonder what should create Shun made a mental note to research this at a later date. I can feel it. I can feel everyone's power Ashura shouts. And with the help of the chakra carrying everyone's thoughts and hopes, Ashura claps his hands and used the sage art would release, true several thousand hands. A humongous wooden construct in the form of a Buddha with his two hands clapped together. Hundreds of hands extending from its back appeared with Ashura standing on its head. The size towers over Indra's Susanu by two times. Indra in his rage flew up to clash with the Ashura. Ashura, Indra shouts. Elder brother. Ashura fights back with his several hands and destroys Indra's Susanu while injuring him in the process. When the dust settled down a little, Indra was on the ground with blood flowing out of his mouth. Guess they didn't use any flashy techniques after all. The fight was quite boring but still interesting. Ashura, in his kindness, ran toward Indra to heal him. Stay back Indra shouts at him. Shun, knowing this was his opportunity to follow Indra, immediately activated his domain to cover only the three of them. Indra who attempted to flick her away noticed a change immediately and looked around cautiously. You've both outdone yourselves, a voice came from the whole area. So you were watching Shun. Indra being the intelligent one immediately understood what was going on. Ah, Shun. So you're here. Wait, where are you? Ashura then tried sensing him but still couldn't find him which confuses him greatly. Before he could say anything else, Shun interrupted. L meant that as both a compliment and an admonishment. Ashura, I didn't know you've gotten strong, well done and you Indra, what's all this about? I thought my advice a year ago reached you somehow but this? Trying to kill your brother, for what? Being the successor? What came over you Indra? You don't know anything. You wouldn't understand Indra refuted. Yes, I wouldn't understand not bothering to talk to him anymore, Shun appeared in between Indra and Ashura, and facing Ashura, he said. Ashura, good job. I believed you'd be strong someday. I want to have a chat with Indra. I'll be back later to talk with the old man. Tell him I left with Indra. Okay. Take care of elder brother Ashura said with a proud yet sad smile. 
And with that, the domain effect went off and both Sean and Indra disappeared. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Join my Patreon page at patreon.com slash joshrichie. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Chapter 35, Zetsu. Join my Patreon page at patreon.com slash joshrichie. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. After the effect of the domain disappeared, it looked like Indra disappeared as Ashura was running up to him. The effect of the domain didn't affect the villagers so they didn't know that time was reduced for them. The domain Shun created had a time reduction ability, he imitated the same concept from his realm's HTC as he could now instinctively do it. To the outsiders watching, it looked like Indra was running towards Indra and then he shouted stay back and then disappeared. After Indra disappeared, Hagaromo approached Ashura and placed a hand on his shoulder without saying anything as it looked like Ashura was grieving. Ashura looked at Hagaromo and said, Shun was here. He said he'd have a talk with Indra and will come to talk to us later. Hagaromo nodded his head in acknowledgement. It seems like he noticed the slight change in reality when Shun's domain was used. They both stood in silence for a while before they went back to the village. Meanwhile a few minutes ago, Shun POV. As I noticed Indra's presence approaching the village, I created a clone and instructed it to search for Black Zetsu. I knew he would be around here somewhere. Apart from his desire to bring back Kagaya, he also harbored hatred for Hagaromo. So there would be no way he would not be here when Hagaromo's two children are fighting. I could have gone myself but I would like to watch this fight between Indra and Ashura. The clone nodded and flashed away to look for Zetsu. Normally no sensor can possibly locate Zetsu should he want to remain hidden. That was the problem I had before. No matter how strong I became in the past, I still couldn't locate Zetsu's presence. Maybe it's due to him being Kaigaya's will thereby having an advantage when it comes to hiding from anyone's senses. Currently, though, I could be said to be on the same power level as Hagaromo, so I could locate him no matter where he is. After all, every living being has soul fluctuations. Previously, I could detect any presence that has contact with the earth, air, water particles, and even magnetic pulses but I still couldn't locate him. Now, I could sense the presence of anyone's soul fluctuation so he doesn't have anywhere to hide. Not bothering about my clone anymore, I focused my attention on the ensuing fight between these two brothers. Clone POV I needed to find Zetsu's location as the battle between Indra and Ashura was going on. If it's Setsu, he would want to watch the battle also so I don't have to focus far if I want to find him. He wouldn't be too near to the village as he would have to evade Hagaromo's senses but he shouldn't be too far away. Floating at a good distance above the village where even Indra and Ashura Susanu and Wooden Buddha would not even reach, I used my soul energy to scan the entire expanse of land around the village. The scan spanned close to 10 kilometers but I still couldn't sense anything. Either Zetsu was adept at playing hide-and-seek or he isn't nearby. It should be less than 30 years since he was created, so he should have a good understanding when it comes to hiding his presence. From the anime, I know he can hide anywhere starting from trees to someone's shadow. Right now though, he shouldn't have reached that stage. So without letting up my senses, I used my other sensing abilities alongside the soul sense. One of my dojutsu abilities to see the world around me in high resolution was also put to use. Using my chakra to the limit, I scanned the whole area reaching even the faraway mountains Indra normally goes to brood. It didn't take long for me to receive feedback from the search. Turns out he was in the mountain area probably awaiting Indra's return. He flinched a little, seemingly noticing something weird and attempted to dive into the ground. Before he could do it though, I flashed from where I was and appeared where he was and froze the 3 meter area around him. Time wasn't exactly from as this wasn't my realm, but with me using it alongside a mini domain, the area was frozen in time. Surprisingly, Zetsu could still move, but not leave the area where the time was frozen. I looked at him with my deep red eyes with 6 black pointed stars swirling within to give him a scare. Looking at me with his pupil less yellow eyes, I notice a trace of disbelief and then confusion before fear crept in. 
No matter what, any living being will fear what they don't understand and that stands true for Zetsu in this case. Although I wonder what caused the confusion in him. Ah, it's either my dojitsu that looks like Indra's eternal Manjikyu Sharingan or the fact that he can feel the space and time restriction I placed around him. Without saying anything, I teleported him to my dimension or realm now. I could have placed a seal on him but I wouldn't be secure with that. In my realm though, I am God, so no matter what, he won't be running away. You won't be able to run away from here. Stay put. My main body will be attending to you in a while I said to him before dispelling. Zetsu POV. When I came into existence, I didn't know what was going on. I only knew that I was created by my creator, my mother as a will to release her from the seal her children put her into. I didn't know what to do at first. I only knew that no matter what I needed to release my mother. I had her knowledge of this world. I knew that she didn't hate her children for putting her in that seal. I knew how betrayed she felt that her own children chose to fight against her. The feeling of betrayal was so intense that I ended up feeling hatred toward my mother's children. I hated them so much that if hatred could kill they would have died a hundred times over. But deep down, I knew I couldn't do anything to them. The eldest son took mother's chakra while the second son left to watch mother's body. They were strong. Strong enough to fight mother but I knew they couldn't beat mother. Mother didn't just want to fight her children so she didn't fight back. I couldn't take back another chakra. I thought of what to do but I couldn't come up with any ideas, so I continued waiting. Not long after the mother was sealed, mother's first son went around giving these lowly humans that caused all of the mother's grief, her chakra. I could tolerate mother's first son taking mother's chakra but I couldn't accept the fact that mother's very chakra was running in the veins of these humans. But still, I couldn't do anything about it. Years later, mother's first child, Hagaromo, was his name, bred a human woman, and gave birth to an offspring. I wanted to vent my anger on him but I couldn't get close without alarming Hagaromo. Months later, she gave birth to another boy and died later on. I guess she couldn't handle giving birth to Watsutsuki children with her human body. Years passed and I noticed that Hagaromo split his powers between his two children unconsciously. His first son Indra inherited his father's chakra while the second son Ashura inherited his father's spiritual energy only. I came up with the conclusion that if I get to one of the children, I could have a way to collect the two inheritances to become one again and unseal mother. Unfortunately, however, they both were too full of positive energy to be influenced negatively. Nonetheless, I remained patient. As the years went by there was another boy who was brought to live with them. He gave me a different feeling for someone his age. I decided to keep an eye on him and besides his thirst for knowledge, there wasn't anything special about him so I didn't bother with him as he wouldn't be influential in the plan to unseal mother. I waited patiently until I saw the sign of Hagaromo's chakra awakening in Indra when he was emotionally distraught. The energy he released at that moment gave me a feeling of closeness. Upon closer inspection, I found out that he has the same eyes as his father and my mother, though it was in the early stages. This opened another door for me. So, at intervals, I would approach him and offer him kind advice on how to use his powers well, praising him to fuel his ego, feeding him ideas that will fuel his inferiority, and also boosting his sense of superiority when the time presents itself. Years continued to pass by and I noticed the increase in chakra in the boy that came to live with them later on. He was forcefully taking in the natural energy and strengthening himself but I still didn't take him seriously as a mere human could never hope to surpass mother's bloodline. When the time came for Hagaromo to choose his successor I knew this was an opportunity. I didn't give him any advice on how to go about it as I truly didn't know what to tell him. I only felt that no matter whether he succeeds or loses, it would still present a perfect opportunity. When they both left, the boy, Shun, left with them. I felt a sense of alarm seeing him but I couldn't place a hand on what could make him feel threatening. A year went by and Ashura came back. Turns out Hagaromo chose Ashura instead of Indra. Seeing this as a perfect opportunity to darken Indra more, I gave him a shortcut to power. I have studied the chakra in humans all these years and I came to the conclusion that no matter the emotion, they all come from the soul. 
When they feel happy, sad, angry, love, and all those useless emotions, they have a momentary burst of spiritual power that comes from their soul. I knew Indra would listen to anything as far as he could vent the anger that has been accumulating in H for a while now. This is the result of my efforts all these years. I told him that to further strengthen his eyes, all he had to do was kill those closest to him. And like the good puppet he was, he did. I couldn't wait to watch the chaos he would cause. I was just about to go and watch the fight as the trembling I felt should signal the start of their fight when I felt a unique energy scanning around me. I immediately hid my very presence but it didn't take long before I felt an even scarier energy scanning around me. I don't know what this being is looking for but I hope it's not me. That soul energy I felt is scary, even bordering mothers. As the energy locked onto me, I felt like I was being watched and I immediately wanted to run. Unfortunately, the being flashed inside the mountain cave and sealed the area around me. I felt like I was being forced to remain still in time. Space-time control? Are they here already I thought? Turning around, I expected to see an Atsutsuki but what greeted my eyes was the very boy I always disregarded. What? Shun? How? What's going on here? No this isn't Shun. He looks older and his hair isn't white. But this chakra and presence. It's him. And wait a minute. Isn't that Indra's eye? I know his eye is red but where did the Tomo come from? Is he also Hagoromo's child? Why didn't I know of this before? As this thought ran through my head, a feeling I haven't felt in a long time surfaced again. Is this fear? No, I fear no one. But this boy, what is he? He looked at me with an expressionless face and said. You won't be able to run away from here. Stay put. My main body will be attending to you in a while. And with that, my environment changed. I guess this is one of the seals he has been working on. But this is mother's world, as far as I am here, there is nowhere I can't go. I tried moving into the ground but I felt I couldn't perform all my techniques. It felt like I had left my mother's world. What's this place? This isn't the mother's world. Where am I? At that moment, I couldn't help panicking. This is new territory. What is going on here? POV end. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Join my Patreon page at patreon.com slash joshrichie. Thanks for the support. I appreciate. Chapter 36, Talk. Join my Patreon page at patreon.com slash joshrichie. Thanks for the support. I appreciate. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. I appeared in my dimension with Indra's injured and unconscious body. I didn't know when he fainted. It's either because of his first spatial movement coupled with his already injured body. Well, since we're in my dimension, he will automatically heal either way. Flashing once more, I appeared inside my mansion and dropped him off in an empty room and left to speak to my other visitor. Reverting to my normal appearance which looks like a young man in his early twenties, with silver-white hair and deep red eyes and a six-pointed star rotating continuously in it. I made the tomos keep rotating as intimidation. I need to leave a long-lasting impression on poor Zetsu. I have thought about how to go about this for some time now. With the power I have now, I could literally destroy Zetsu now and protect this world from the chaos, anarchy, and bloodshed of the future, but that won't be helpful. No matter how one looks at it, Zetsu is important to the world's development. Maybe that's also part of the reason Hagoromo left into his devices in the anime. Hagoromo believed in humanity and hoped that they would find their way to peace. That's why when he finally felt it was time, he appeared and gave Sasuke and Naruto their six paths power equally. During my soul awakening, I came to understand a lot of things, similar to most stories where gods lead humans, humans tend to resist control and seek freedom. So my trying to play God and protect this world based on sentimentality will surely backfire. Indra just tried it and he didn't succeed at even winning against his brother. Madara tried it and the humans of the future united against him. 
Zetsu will be the driving force toward human development in this world. As I've said before, with war, humans will evolve whether they level like it or not. They will fight against the tide and try to come up with new paths that will lead to a better future. I have long stopped treating this world as an anime. Just as I have these feelings, everyone I meet also feels and possesses a will of their own. Shaking off these thoughts, I prepared to meet Zetsu. With my preparation complete, I flashed to where my clone restricted him. I appeared right in front of him, startling him greatly. With an expressionless face and red eyes focused on him, I said. Hello, Black, fancy meeting you here don't you think? Still looking startled and a little fearful, he asked. Who are you? What do you want from me? Where is this place? I would be asking the questions here, Black. First of all, what's your name? I asked coldly. It would be weird calling him Zetsu as that is the name he made Madara think he named it. I have no name. That's all I know Zetsu said. HM? That's weird. Well, not that it matters. What are you? You don't seem normal. You don't have a life force but have a soul. That's peculiar. Care to satiate my curiosity I asked again. He hesitates to reply. I know he won't tell me what I want to know voluntarily and I don't think I have a scheming talent as high as Zetsa here still just get straight to the point. No matter whether you answer or not Black. I will call you Black since you don't have a name. So, Black, I know what you are and I know your goals. I knew when you started approaching Indra but I couldn't do anything now it's different. Zetsu, at first looked a little bit scared but as I mentioned Indra, he finally became flustered. Not minding him, I continued. Yes, your guess is probably right, I am Shun, and I know everything about you Black. I thought I could prevent this from happening but I guess I couldn't go against fate huh? Anyway, let's get down to why I brought you here. Looking at me now, I knit your thinking, how did all this happen? Well, guess what Black, I am not telling you. I know what may or may not happen should you be hellbent on unsealing your mother and I must say that I am not going to let them happen. I increased my pressure with both chakra and soul energy, creating something similar to hockey. Right now, I couldn't care less but in the future, I may be visiting you. I don't want to hear what you have to say. When I need you, I will come for you. Beware and tell nothing of this to Indra or I will be coming for you. As I finish, I teleported him away from the dimension while leaving a sentence to him, I will send Indra out soon. Wow. I finally did it. Whether it is for good or bad, I don't know. At least I let out something from my chest. I should have also left a shadow in his heart. I think. I know what I did is stupid and illogical. As I said before, I am not good at scheming and stuff like that but I still understand how the mind works to a certain extent. With this, he will never forget my existence and I could somehow control what he will be doing in the future without interfering in the plot too much. If fate is as think it is from the cultivation world, then no matter what changes happen, Hashirama and Madara will exist, and so will Naruto and Sasuke. The world will work towards the destination point no matter what happens. There can only be slight changes in between but they shouldn't affect the end point. That aside, for now, I need to speak to Indra and find out his motivation behind this. Zetsu may have played a part in this dark phase but he should have had a desire worth fanning for Zetsu. With a flash, I appeared in the room I left Indra and he was already healed physically. It should take some time before he is mentally recovered. In case you're wondering why Indra could be healed, it's a special effect of my dimension. When I was creating this dimension, I used my chakra elements for every aspect of the dimension. Fire and yang for the sun, water, and in for the moon, earth for the earth, water for the ocean, air for air, and later on, I managed to add in numerous kekai genkai for different seasons namely I store winter, storm water plus lightning and many more. But in the end, I used all elements to create the dimension. When I perfected my yin yang release, I could now add any effect I like on the dimension, namely using the sun energy consisting of yang energy for healing, using the yin energy for illusion or shadow manipulation, and other kekai genkai could now be used anyhow I wish. And with the healing effect of the sun, 
I managed to heal Indra to perfect health. Returning to my transformed appearance, I waited for Indra to wake up. Not long after, Indra woke up and looked around confused as to how he got there. I am sure he is either confused by the architectural structure of the room. Well looks like you decided to wake up I decided to announce my presence now. Indra was a little startled before he immediately calmed himself down. Without looking at me, he said. What do you want Shun? That's supposed to be my question, Indra. What do you mean by the stunt you pulled? Fighting Ashura? That's okay, I get it. You're angry, but trying to kill him and destroy the village? What's that about? Because you're stronger you decided to kill him. And what was that bullshit about establishing order with your power? So you were watching, Indra said. Of course, I was watching. I just came back a day ago and couldn't find you anywhere. And when you finally came, you came to kill our brother, your blood. That's low Indra. You wouldn't understand. You are not me, I am stronger than Ashura, I am the eldest, I am supposed to be the successor. What is it that is wrong? Successor? Just because of being the successor you went mad. Do you know? I used to believe that power corrupts but I realized this during my travels this past year. With power, comes a choice. The choice to be better or be worse. Look at your father, have you ever felt the amount of energy he possesses? His sheer chakra is a hundred times higher than yours. The quality too, but what does he do with all that power? He uses it to help people and to better the lives of the people around him. What does that tell you? I asked. That he is weak. As you said, power gives people choice, I chose to use it to bring about order. People don't know what's good for them. I would make that order. That is my choice and I will make it happen Indra said. Way to go, me. I just gave him another reason to further strengthen his resolve. Sigh. What happened to you, Indra? You used Tum the sweet and smart one. What changed? As father said when you were fighting, people will go against you if you govern them through fear I try to reason. And I said, no matter how the weak band together, they will still be one powerless before true power. Even you shun, you may have been stronger than me, but that was in the past. Well damn. He thinks he is strong now. Typical arrogance of the strong when they have never tasted true defeat. Should I tone him down a little or not? Nah his arrogance annoys me. Let me show him what true strength means. Whom? Should I use the dimension or my domain? Tough choice. Let's go with the domain as that will show him the extent of my chakra. With a thought, a wave of chakra left my body, and my domain was activated. Whom? You think, you are strong? Ha ha, Indra. The pressure I was using was the same as I used for Zetsu. With every word, I increased the pressure on him. Do not misunderstand, Indra, you don't know what true power is. With another burst of chakra, the pressure increased and Indra fell to his knees, gasping for air. Guess I overdid it a little. TSK. You can't even handle that little illusion and you want to control me. Don't kid yourself. This would be my final word of advice brother. Think about what you truly want. I won't bother myself with either of you again. I don't want to hurt his pride or something like that. So I decided to make him think it was all an illusion. Hopefully, he buys it. Creating a wooden token the size of a palm, I drew some seals on it and there it to him. When you're well enough to move, send your chakra I'm this and get out of here. That is a one-time use seal so this should be the last time we meet again if you continue down this part. After saying that I left the room. I was really sad for Indra. I would use Genjutsu to change him into a good person but that is me taking away his free will. As I told him before, the power he has now gives him the right to choose. With the power I have now, I could rewrite anyone's brain into whatever I want them to be, but even I have morals. As this era isn't the era of wars yet, should I do something like that, there will be no going back. 
Once you perform one wrong deed, no matter how difficult it is at first, it will be easier the second time. Well, I am done with this brother's squabble. I better go talk with Hagaromo about this and find out where I will go from here. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Join my Patreon page at patreon.com slash joshrichie. Thanks for the support. I appreciate. Chapter 37, No Title A slash N I will be using, spiritual sense, instead of, soul sense, and, universal sense, and chakra for every energy-related stuff. It will be confusing writing senjutsu or natural energy repeatedly so I will just generalize them as chakra until there is a need to be specific. Forward slash forward slash forward slash I teleported out of my realm and appeared near the village. It was already evening the next day when I arrived the villagers were already calm and getting back to work. The children weren't involved in the stuff that happened, the adults were already preparing the village to the best of their ability, after all, they all possess chakras so there's nothing they can't do should they put their minds to it. I first decided to meet up with Ashura and tell him about what Indra and I discussed, how he goes from there should have nothing to do with me. Using my spiritual sense, I found him hard at work with the villagers. The guy sure is a lovable guy. Arriving beside him, I enveloped him in my domain so as not to alert the villagers. Yo Ashura, I said, startling him and drawing his attention to me. Hey Sean, don't just pop out like that, it's scary, man. How do you even do that? He said. Don't mind, don't mind. It's just a little trick. Anyway, I came to tell you that I had a talk with Indra. Come meet me outside the village let's talk I told him seriously. Sure. Let me finish up here he said. I removed my domain and vanished once more. Not that I don't want the villagers to see me at all but I don't want them to see me after all that happened yesterday. You never know what they would say and I am not in the mood to hear whatever they may say. I watched them rebuild the village for a while. At the end of the day, they managed to clean up the village properly and also erect new houses in place of the damaged ones. I left the village and went to the area Indra and Ashura fought. Ashura already has the young half of the Hagaromo's chakra so he would sense should he try to. I didn't wait long before I felt Ashura approaching me. When he came closer, I decided to speak first. So, I had a talk with Indra and he believes he is right in what he did. What do you think about it? Ashura looked surprised at Deest before turning sad again and looking down, he said. I don't know, but I believe that everyone in the village needs to live their life the way they want it. I did not want to be the successor if it was possible I would have rejected it, but my father chose me and the villagers need me, so I need to protect them. That's what I believe. Whom? He will be back, you know? What will you do by then? I will stop him no matter what, if he comes again, I will keep on stopping him. Just as you told me, a leader needs strength to protect his people, and now I have the strength needed to protect the villagers from Indra. Yeah, you are right. You are strong now, you can protect them and stop Indra should he comes looking for trouble. I paused, thinking of the talk I had with Indra and remembering his conviction that what he was doing is right. I knew whatever Zetsa said to him had taken deep root in Jim and will not be changed till he dies. But Ashura doesn't know and doesn't need to know that. Well, I don't know what made him like that but I hope he gets back to his senses. I don't know either but I will make sure to bring him back to his senses, one way or another, after all, he is my brother, and the idea that I know is kind. Just you wait Sean, I will stop Indra. Ashura said with unwavering determination. I guess this is the same determination that made him reincarnate his soul alongside Indra's for generations. Sure. I believe you I said with a smile. Of course, I know he could. His kindness is the purest I have seen so far and I am sure even in the future, he would remain the same. Maybe I would see a few more kind souls but there won't be any IP and kind of like Ashura. We spent some time talking about irrelevant things. I also taught him some things concerning chakra, how to better manipulate it, and other things. How do you know all these things, he asked in amazement and slight confusion. That's for me to know and for you to find out Ashura, anyway, 
I need to go speak with father now so I catch you later, I said before we walked back to the village and I then disappeared once again. Why does he always do that Ashura mumbled. This time, I didn't teleport as I calmly walked through the village. When I heard his number, I couldn't help but chuckle. It won't take me long to reach Hagaromo's location. When approached him, he was the one that spoke first. So, Shun, I wasn't free yesterday, so I didn't get to hear about your experiences during your travels. If you don't mind, can you tell me about them? Yes, of course, old man. So I roughly told him everything that happened during this one year, I didn't have the fact that I used clones to travel around. I also told him about the god tree branches I have in my possession. Hmm. What do you plan on doing with those branches, Shun? He interrupted. I do not know yet, I haven't found any important use for it yet. So I kept it in a safe location for now. It also wasn't near any human settlements, so there isn't a problem with it I said. I hope you know what you are doing. You may be a genius superior even to Indra, but you must know there are things you do not mess with. Relax old man, if his eye it's safe then it's safe, I said. I then went on to tell him about my chakra gates and removed my transformation. Oh? This is surprising. You almost look like my mother. I would have thought you were one of them if I didn't know better. How did you do it again? He asked. There wasn't much to hide so I told him all about the process. I didn't mention the dimension though. I then found out that my chakra may be better than Hagaromo's in quality, but he has me beat in the sheer quantity of chakra. As Hagaromo has both his original Senjutsu chakra, sage body, and then the ten tails, his chakra was humongous. Whereas if I am to say I had four to five tails worth of chakra previously, currently, I have around two tails worth, and that's just the amount due to the quality of my chakra improving. I didn't let it bother me though, my chakra will increase steadily over the years even if I don't do anything and just sleep as FSR as there remains natural energy in this world. Alright, I spoke with Indra just now, and he is back to good health I changed the topic to talk about my main reason for being here. Sigh, is that so? I wonder what I did wrong with him. So what did you two talk about? I know you didn't just take him away to talk only he asked. Well yes, Indra may have become stupid but he is still my brother. I just didn't understand how his hatred could be so deep that he would try to kill Ashura. If you hadn't given Ashura a part tour power, he may not have been able to stop Indra M, you know. I don't know if you felt it old man, but his hatred runs deep, both for you and Ashura. Who thinks your ideology is foolish and Ashura is one who stole what should be his? And what do you think about that? Do you think my ideology is foolish? I may be known by all as a sage but even I am still human. So do tell me your thoughts on this Hagaromo asked. Whether your ideology is foolish or not, only time will tell, but personally, I don't think either of you is right or wrong. The moment you stared chakra to the world, you already destroyed whatever semblance of peace that should have existed. But maybe you are also right in doing so I don't know. But when this world will be plunged in into chaos due to this, someone like Indra would be needed. Either as a symbol of order or as a symbol of fear to bring the people together. During my travels, I found that humans are very tenacious, so things will work out well in the future. Don't worry about it. As for Indra, he is just driven by emotions and not thinking logically, maybe he will come back to his senses soon, maybe he will not, it all depends on Ashura now. There is no need for me to say all these things, after all, things worked out well in the anime, one way or another, things will work out well here too. I know it will be close to impossible to reconcile Indra and Ashura in this lifetime so there isn't much for me to do. We then spent some time with some idle chatter until it was late into the night. M before I bade him good night. Oh, old man, I plan on visiting Uncle Hamira soon, I may be leaving tomorrow after I help build new houses for the village, I said as I was leaving. Oh? Is there a reason for that he asked? Nah, just some casual visit. This world has a lot to offer, I can't afford to stay in one place. I said. Hmm. If you say so. I will give you the direction to the doorway to the moon as that is where he is. Nah, don't worry about it. 
I will fly up there. Maybe later I could try using the portal I said. I didn't want to give up using my newfound strength to my advantage. If I am not mistaken, at this stage, I could breathe in space like those Atsutsukis. Even Naruto could breathe on the moon. Not sure if it's due to the special effects Hamira left behind or if it is part of that anime logic we all can't understand and are to the back of our heads. Anyway, I am going to have to go there one of these days. Now, about tomorrow, should I build an earth house or a wooden one? The other has advantages and disadvantages. If make them more durable, their disadvantages will be taken care of. Hmm. I think I would go for the wooden ones. I am then going to teach it to Ashura. He is going to be the village chief so he should know how to make things with his wood release. Hmm, time to sleep then. I don't really to sleep but I enjoy it. Not like I have any better things I am doing. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Sorry, for the late release guys. Something came up and I had to take care of that first. Thanks for the support and power stones guys. I appreciate. I am kinda new to this so I would appreciate your ideas on this. Also, don't forget those power stones. Victory hand victory hand. Chapter 38, Teaching Ashura. After the chat with Hagoromo, I went to have a nice sleep as I haven't slept in close to six months now. I don't actually need to sleep or eat or even perform any of the needs normal humans perform as I can rely on the energy of the world to keep me active, but I am still human and old habits die hard. I still just want to sleep for the joy of it. Reaching my room which I haven't been to in a year now, I notice it isn't dusty at all. Nonetheless, I fall asleep soon after. Waking up the following morning, I went outside to receive a fair dose of the early morning breeze. There really is no place like home. Though this village is wrecked it still is as refreshing as always. Not long after, the villagers started coming out from their makeshift houses and the children went about their business, I called Ashura aside to prepare for the building of the houses. Hey Ashura, good morning, how was your night? Hmm. Shun. It was okay, I guess, he said. I asked you how your night was, don't ask me how your night was, dumbass. He he. Anyways, I called you out here to teach you a very important technique I developed when I was traveling around. It will help you as the head of this village in situations like this. That is, should Indra attack again. Hearing this, Ashura got serious as this would affect the people. If it was before, he wouldn't be too interested in it as the genius was always Indra. Now though, he's finally taking up responsibility. I noticed during your battle with Indra, you used wood release to create the technique you used to fight Indra. This technique I will be teaching you will also be based on the wood release. Pay attention to these hand signs. I decided to use hand signs as that is more stylish and will probably look cool. People this day could already perform ninjutsu without hand signs. I noticed that when they tried to help battle, Indra. Although Ashura possesses the wood release now, he hasn't mastered it to a satisfying level where he doesn't need hand signs anymore. Showing him a set of hand signs to mold the chakra and control the output so as not to build an overly large house or a small house, I placed my palms on the floor. Wood style, house building technique. The ground rumbled before roots started sprouting from the floor and gradually took the form of the houses that were previously being used before they were destroyed. At least, this would be a construct he is used to so there shouldn't be many mistakes. I stood up and looked at the house in satisfaction before turning and looking at Ashura. He was staring at the house with mouth agape. I could tell he was surprised but I couldn't pinpoint what exactly. The rumbling the house caused attracted the villagers, both children and adults alike and they were looking at both me and the house in astonishment. What is that? Who did that? How? Was it Master Ashura? Yes it's possible, remember that he could create that giant the other night. But look, Master Ashura seems as confused as us, someone pointed out. Was it young Master Shun? A lot of question was popping up from the crowd but I didn't bother to reply to them yet. Ashura finally came out of his stupor and looked at me with excitement in his eyes. Brother, how did you do that? 
I haven't even thought about this yet and you're already building a house in less than five seconds. It's nothing, it's nothing. I just picked it up when I was traveling. One day it just came to me and I built one. After all, I need a place to sleep when I am outside. I said with slight pride. Even though I was trying to be modest. Wow, amazing. As expected of you Ashura said in admiration. I didn't want to dwell on the issue too much so I went to the technique. So? Did Toy learn it? Ha! Huh? What are you talking about? Ashura asked in embarrassment. But you were looking at me seriously, I thought you were going to learn it instantly from how you were looking at me you dumb asterisk asterisk s. Sigh. He wasn't even paying attention. I thought maybe you were trying to show me another way to fight or something like that, he defended himself while blushing slightly. I chuckled at this. I couldn't really get angry at him. Well, not like it's going to hurt me to show him again, but before that let me see how much he can understand about his ability. Okay okay, now, let me ask you this, what do you think about the, wood release? Hmm. I don't know much about it. Father just gave me his power recently so I haven't had time to even ask him about it, talk more of even understanding it, Ashura said. Well, I can't blame him. He probably doesn't even know what elements combine to make up the wood. Okay. Back to basics. You know there are five elemental affinities, right? Yes, he nodded. From my studies, I discovered that you can mix two or three of these elements to form an entirely new element. Take for example water and wind to create ice, water and earth to create mud, lightning and water to create storms, and many more of those. As I mentioned the elemental combinations, I created them to show him physical examples. He was following so far and wanted to ask something but seeing as I was seriously talking, he refrained from doing so. Good for him, cause I wouldn't have answered even if he asked. There are also two elements that father has thought us about before but we can't manifest except for special circumstances. The yin and yang elements. These two elements are present in everyone and can be used in special ways, like your healing technique which is unique to only you as a manifestation of your yang chakra, while Indra's eyes is a result of pure yin chakra. Now, if you can consciously feel this chakra in your body, you can use them in tandem with other techniques to empower them. The Yin Chakra has the ability to create anything illusions from nothing or even give one special mind-related abilities and the Yang Chakra can give form to anything. One thing they have in common is that they are both parts of nature and strengthen either the body or the mind respectively and they both depend on the will of the user to show their might. Just as Yin is to the mind, Yang is to the body. Now answer me this question. What happens when you pour water on loose soil? It turns to mud, he answered. Good, then what happens to a seed when you plant it and then water it? It sprouts and grows, Ashura said. Exactly, like Indra, you have an affinity for all five elements. Where you inherited the yang part from your father, Indra inherited the yin. Just like how water and earth give you mud, water and earth mixed with strong yang chakra give you wood. And in the situation whereby father then empowers your already existing yang energy with his own, what do you think happens? I become stronger? Ashura asked. Well yes you do but that's not the point. Sigh. Okay look at it from this point of view, when you saw Indra's gigantic form, what came to your mind? What came to my mind? Hmm. I thought I needed to be stronger to protect the villagers who put their hope in me and then that image came to my mind Ashura said after much thought. That's it. At that point I'm time. Father has already given you his chakra, right? Your will to protect the villager empowered your already existing chakra and help unlock a stronger form of all elements. Wood. When you think about nature, what comes to mind? I ask. Wood he answers. Exactly. With wood, no other element can stand in your way except elements like the future, dust release, but I ain't telling him that. So now, Ashura, you don't even need the hand signs. You already possess the power to do this without hand signs. All you have to do now is try to recall that feeling from the right with Indra, but this time instead of a fighting technique, think of a building, any building as it is where the villagers will take shelter in. 
The stronger you make the building, the better. After saying that, I fell silent and allowed him to come up with a way by himself. The villagers were still paying attention to us as this is new territory, even for them and except for Indra, I am the next genius around. Even the newcomers should know about me by now. Not much longer, Ashura closed his eyes and put both his hands on the ground and then roots start coming out from the ground and taking the form of what should be called a house. It should have been a house, or that should have been his plan but what greeted my sight was not something I could describe with mere words. The mere sight of it destroys the image of the house I created beside it. Ashura opened his eyes to look at his creation but the silence grabs his attention before he could look at it. Assuming we were admiring his house, he lifts his head high and then turns around. The look on his face changed drastically in a second from shock to confusion to realization and then shame. He first looks at me and noticed my expressionless eyes looking him straight in the eyes. Dodging eye contact with me, he then looks at the villagers who were looking at him with an expression that even I could not describe. Ha ha! Ashura then laughs while blushing. I honestly didn't know what to say, but I can't blame him either. It is teaching someone a new technique for the first time and expecting him to master it immediately. I am not going to lie, I expected him to learn it immediately as he already possesses half of the six paths chakra. It might be my wishful thinking after all. Sigh. Don't mind it. It's your first time so I don't expect you to learn it immediately. Take your time to practice it. At that time, you should get the hang of it. Remember, it's all about the image. Think about the thing you wish to create and it would be created. Chakra is a very useful part of life. Two can find it anywhere, you just have to look. Anyway, I got to go. Gotta meet Uncle Hamira soon, so, goodbye for now. With that, I left him to his devices. Most of the things I said to him are my own thoughts on the issue of elements, with time, he will be to understand it in his own unique way. I reached home soon and went to meet Hagoromo. I had to let him know I was leaving as it is common courtesy to do so. I may have already told him I will be leaving but I got to announce my departure. After letting Hagoromo know that I would be on my way, I left the village. Now question is, should I find the portal to the moon or should I fly there, after all, Hamira could come and go as he wished, similar to Hagoromo. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Hey guys, don't think too much about my explanation on how would release works. This is my FF so. Chapter 39, Hamira. I ended up deciding to fly up there. Maybe later on I might be interested and end up going on an adventure to find the portal. Reaching a satisfactory distance from the village, I flew directly into the sky. It was currently daytime so the moon should be on the other side of the world right now. I didn't have to travel all the way to the other side just to find the moon. All I had to do was just fly up, and when I left the Earth's atmosphere, I immediately spotted the moon a fair distance from me. In less than five minutes, I was already on the moon. As I stepped onto the moon, I noticed something scanning me. It must be Uncle Hamira, he should be alerted that someone could even fly all the way up here except his brother. Not long after, I saw him coming out from a modest-looking house structure made from space rocks. In case you're wondering, yes, I have met Hamira, we all have, Indra, Ashura, and I. He doesn't come frequently but he visits at least once per year or thereabout, so I have met him. He also has a family up in space, I haven't met them yet but apparently, Indra and Ashura have. They should have met before I came, but I wonder why they don't come down. From their discussions, I knew he jas a wife and two children, a boy and a girl. The boy's name is Hokuki while the girl's name is Hinami. And something peculiar about him is that although he acts normal, I always feel like he is suppressing a lot of emotions. Guilt, sadness, and many more. He should still be feeling bad about what they did to their mother. Part of the reason I came here is to hear about his part of the history and ask if I can manually learn the sealing technique used in sealing Kagaya the Sho Shibaku Tensei. True Planetary Devastation I am just trying to learn more about seals. There can never be enough knowledge. So I don't see why I shouldn't maximize this opportunity. 
Those aside, I should greet my uncle before it gets awkward. Hello, uncle. Shun. What are you doing here? Wait. How did you get here in the first place? Did brother tell you where I placed the portal up here? No, I would know if someone came through there. What is going on? Hamura asked a flurry of questions in confusion. Ha, ah, uncle I know you're confused. Don't worry, I will tell you everything. But you should probably invite me inside, don't you think? I said. Oh, yeah, come on in. I didn't expect you here so I was confused as all. Thanks with that, we proceeded into the building. Before entering though, I noticed some chakra signatures inside the building. They should be his family. Similar to Indra and Ashura, two chakra signatures were humongous compared to the last one which was weak, very weak if I might add. That should be the mother of the other two children. That's a surprise. My scan didn't wasn't noticed by anyone, Hamura included and I made sure to keep my face as composed as possible. Entering the house, Hamura said, come on in. Excuse me, I said as I entered. Entering the house, I noticed two pairs of eyes boring into my very being, it felt like my entire existence has been exposed to those eyes. Still, with a composed look I first greeted the elder woman in the house, good day to you aunt. Ah, good day, you must be Shun. I have heard a lot about you from my husband the woman said. All good things, I hope, I say with a polite smile. She laughed a little and said, all good things. You sure know how to talk. Ah, I try my best to please, aunt. Ha ha. These are my children, Hokuki and Hinami, this should be your first time meeting them right? I then looked at the two teenagers suiting beside the woman for the first time, and what I saw made me freeze for a good while. The sight of the girl, Hinami, took my breath away. She was the perfect woman. She had pure white eyes, and silky and shiny black hair spread behind her head. With her exquisite nose, pink cheeks, and cherry red lips, as well as her oval face, she was looking stunningly gorgeous. Her skin was as smooth as snow. Her figure was light and refined. She had an exquisite facial features. One could say that she was an absolute beauty. In both my lives, I have never seen someone as beautiful as she is. I would say she inherited Kagaya's beauty but I haven't seen Kagaya since I came to this world so as of now, she should be the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. I realized I have been staring for some time, so I embarrassedly coughed and diverted my eyes from her, and looked at the boy. The boy was also stunningly handsome and carried a refined air with him. I could have called him the most handsome man in this world but there is me so I didn't stare too much. I may be using a transformation right now to be recognizable to Hamura. When I show my true appearance, I don't think anyone could rival my beauty. Cough, sorry for my rudeness. My name is Shun and it is a pleasure to meet you both I said with a slight bow of my head. Hokuki replied first, it is a pleasure to meet you too Shun, my name is Hokuki Atsutsuki and this is my sister, Hinami Atsutsuki. Hinami bowed her head too with a smile and said, nice to meet you Shun. Damn, her smile is heavenly, if not because of my strong will, I would likely have fallen into a daze by now. I smiled back at her and looked her in the eye. There was a feeling welling up from deep within my chest. I couldn't place a finger on it but I felt something I haven't felt in both my lifetimes. It's the same feeling I have for Indra and Ashura but more intimate, more possessive. The annoying path of this feeling is that I couldn't suppress it. I didn't know what to do about this. I don't have any experience, and for the first time since coming to this world, I wasn't in control. I started panicking, and weird thoughts started popping into my head, and for the first time, I became self-conscious. Cough. What brings you here Shun? You still have a lot of explaining to do Hamura said, interrupting my thoughts. Luckily, he did it at the right time, and I was able to divert my attention from my previous thoughts. I still had those feelings in my chest but my mind forcefully diverted my focus. Ah, yes. Well, a lot of things have happened at home with Indra and Ashura so I decided to leave for some time and explore the world and see its beauty. And then I thought hey, I haven't seen uncle for some time now, 
I should probably visit and here I am. Luckily I also met the whole family I said. Looking at Hinami as I finished. I am sure that is not the case but I won't dwell on it. What happened between Indra and Ashura? Well, father thought of how to choose his successor and gave them a task each to settle some difficulties some villages are facing as a result of the god tree branches. Everyone thought Indra would win, even Ashura didn't hope to win. In the end, Ashura outdid Indra and father chose Ashura as his successor. Indra didn't take a liking to that decision and right now, they are at war. As a brother to the two, I didn't want to pick a side so I left home, and here I am. They all had varying emotions on their faces. Hamura was angry, Hanami, the wife was worried, and Hokuki and Hanami were concerned. How could brother allow such a thing to happen? Why isn't he stopping their fight? Hamura asked in anger. I could tell he was angry at Hagoromo and worried for both his nephews. He said it is what they must go through or something like that, I'm not sure. But before I left, Ashura did promise me he will come to a peaceful arrangement with Indra, so there is probably nothing to worry about I said. I hope they will be okay, Hanami said worriedly. She sure is a good person. I am sure they will, I said. I mean, I know they won't but why should I say anything? My mere presence in this world will surely cause multiple butterfly effects. I am not some control freak who would want everything to be in my control. We talked about the issue for some time before the case was laid to rest. I asked why they live here alone and how they survive without the necessities for living, and I for out that after Hamura built the portal, the land area around there is being used to provide for them. And they don't live here permanently, they usually go down to earth but to the area, the portal is located. I also talked about my abilities and also cancelled my transformation and showed my current appearance. I explained my theory in regard to both the body and soul when it comes to chakra and natural energy. The more I talked the more attentive they became, especially Hinami, and the more I saw how I was getting her attention, I felt the need to show off more, so I removed my transformation to show the effect. After I undid the transformation, they were all odd and I also felt a little fulfilled, but a voice in my head was telling me I should be ashamed of myself. I wonder what that's about. Later on during our talk, Hanami, alongside Hokuki and Hinami excused themselves. Although I felt a little reluctant to see Hinami leave, I still stayed as I had things to talk about with Hamura. Is there anything else you want to talk about Shun? Hamura started. Yes, actually. I heard from father about the cause of the disaster that led to the destruction of the land. I also know you fought alongside father to defeat the monster. Father didn't say anything else about it and I just forced the issue, I'm so I came to ask about your version of the story from you. I hope you will tell me honestly, I finished. Hamura immediately became sad. I could feel all the emotions that were emanating from him. Guilt, sadness, and helplessness were the most prominent. I left him to his feelings, and after what seemed like an hour, he said. To tell you the truth, the monster was our mother. I don't know why you want to know about this, but I will tell you. She was no monster. She wasn't like that. At first, she was a gentle, kind, and loving woman until everything changed as we grew up. She became distant, cold, and even did things that were borderline evil. When your father and I found out, we tried talking to her but she just refused to talk to us. At that time I was young AO I didn't know what was going on. I only knew that she was doing something bad, the way I saw it. Looking back now, I remember seeing a fearful look in her eyes anytime she looks at the sky. A lot of incidents led to the eventual battle between mother and us. Mother, even in the face of our betrayal, didn't fight back seriously. She was inexhaustible as far as she is in this world. We had to resort to sealing her in this moon. She told us that the sky is the most beautiful thing she has ever seen. Anytime I saw her looking at the sky, I always thought she was admiring it. But after our battle with her, I came to an understanding. Mother is not like the humans of this world. My brother and I being her children also aren't the same as them, which means, my mother came from somewhere. So I and your father reached an agreement. I would stand guard here while keeping mother company, 
while he goes around taking care of the aftermath of our battle. You see this moon and the rocks around? I created a seal that protects this world and also hides mother's chakra from her people if there are any. This seal contains her body, while brother took her enormous chakra. As far as those two don't come close to each other, the world won't ever see a threat like that. If you want my version of the story then this is it. We fought our mother and sealed her because we saw the harm she was bringing to the people of this world. That is it. I'm the future, my descendants will carry on this task to protect the world from outside threats and protect. Hamura finished with a smile and a determined look on his face. As he told his story, I felt his emotions calming down little by little and now he has a newfound goal. Is there a way to speak with your mother now? I asked. Sigh, there is but she isn't responding. We may be her children but in the end, we betrayed her so there is nothing wrong with that. I see. With this version of the story, I now know a little bit more about Kagaya. Not like I should be bothered about her release or anything. I just want to know her backstory all. If I have the opportunity to talk to her, I would like to ask what prompted her actions. Putting those thoughts aside, I said. By the way uncle, if you don't mind, can I study these seals? I kind of find them innovative. I have seen a lot of seals but I have never seen one in such huge proportions. Can I study them please? No. Any mistake in this will all crumble, and I am not ready for any disasters in my life. I have a family now, you know he refused firmly. I kept on pleading for close to a whole hour. I even had to give him proofs that I am well learned regarding seals. I almost had to show him my dimension but luckily, he reluctantly accepted under the condition that he will keep watch while I learn. I accepted happily. There is nothing to hide from him and he is just taking precautionary measures. With that, my stay on the moon began. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. I decided on the OC I would make his wife. I had the idea of making the female OC Hanami the founder of Earth's Huba clan, while Hokuki is the founder of the Moon Atsutsuki branch. But now I am thinking of making her the MC's first wife and later on creating a story that will lead to the creation of the Huga clan. Chapter 40, Learning Seals After my conversation with Hamira, I was shown to a room in the house by Hokuki, I wondered how it was possible to breathe comfortably up here on the moon. I may be an exception as I don't think I will suffocate even if I am under the sea, but apart from Hamira, every other person up here on the moon should not be able to breathe normally. I decided to ask Hokuki as he is the only male age mate up here and will be living with me for the foreseeable future. Pardon me for asking but how is it possible for you all to breathe up here on the moon where there is no air? I asked politely. Hokuki looked strangely at me for some seconds before a look of realization struck him. He chuckled and said. You don't need to speak politely with me. We're cousins so just talk to me normally. As for how we can breathe here, it's simple. It's all about the seals. I don't know much about seals as I haven't been interested in them for some time now, but from what my father told me, this area is similar to an open dimension. I don't know what a dimension is but from what father explained, it's a piece of land cut from space or something like that. In this space, father controls the rules here and can decide what exists here and what cannot. From his explanation, I understood what was going on. This moon is not a natural moon from what I can remember from the anime. When Kagaya arrived, this planet didn't have a moon. It was after the battle with Kagaya that the moon was created due to the great catastrophic devastation that was created as a result of her seal. The seal later became the moon. Since the moon is artificial and Kagaya is sealed inside, the moon would have a dimension inside, and if it is a dimensional seal, then it is safe to assume that both Hagoromo and Hamira have some knowledge in regards to dimensional creation. What am I even thinking, of course, they do. Hamira could create a portal to the moon and also create a subspace in between. Hmm, now that you mention it, I seem to have understood what is going on now, I said. Good. You mentioned that you wish to study the seal father placed here. Am I to assume you're well-versed in sealing techniques? Okuki asked. 
Yeah, I can say that after father and uncle, I am the best in sealing out there, I said proudly. I am not sure there is any other person who knows what sealing is though he muttered under his breath, but I heard it loud and clear. He is right, though, apart from Hagaromo, Hamira, and we the second generation, no other person on this planet has come in contact with seals. Not to undermine myself, but I am currently capable of performing any seal with a mere thought. As far as I have an idea of what I want to create, its cause, and the effects I want, I can't create a seal with natural energy. After making some small talk, we arrived at the room I will be staying in for some time. After excusing himself, Hokuki left the room. The room didn't lack anything I will be needing for my stay here. Bed, table, and chair. I suddenly miss my dimension. Although there is an artificial source of light here, it still isn't bright enough. Not that it matters. I am not here to get overly comfortable after all. I came here with a purpose after all and I don't particularly need light to see, so no harm done. I settled in soon after. The next day, I informed Hamura that I will be going to study the seals around this place and we left together. He was really serious about this supervision stuff. On the first day, he took me to the main area of the seal and just stood aside. I don't know what his plan was and I also didn't care. With my spiritual sense, I started inspecting the seals. The seal used here should be similar to my newly discovered method of sealing. Using natural energy, I think Hagaromo and Hamira simply came up with the idea during their battle. From what I am seeing from this seal, I think there are two or so major concepts in play here. This seal is a combination of both gravity, magnetic field, and space. To be explained scientifically, it is like the formation of a black hole but unlike a naturally formed black hole, this one is controlled. Black holes are formed when stars explode in on themselves. And what causes this is when the force binding the said star is weakened, and the only thing that sustains the binding force of any planet is the magnetic field of said planet. It can be assumed that the ground is the positive force while the sky is the negative force and that leads to the creation of gravity. The stronger the magnetic field of a planet, the stronger its gravity. This seal works with the same principle. It is as if a very minute dimension was created to house Kagaya and then a black hole is created inside the dimension constantly pulling in any physical objects towards it. The land, mountains, and hills that were in the former land of that and land of this became what sealed Kagaya shut. And like any large body that also possesses its magnetic field, it floated out of this planet and suspended itself where it is most comfortable. It looks like the yin and yang paths needed to seal Kagaya that Hagoromo gave Naruto and Sasuke were merely the command buttons needed to activate an already given sequence. This is an ingenious way of sealing. Even I with all my knowledge never thought of this but Hagoromo and Hamira came up with this mid-battle. I must say, they have earned my respect once again. After studying that seal, I also noticed that the seal wasn't foolproof. Chakra still leaks out from the seal, and according to M knowledge, when Madara will awaken the Rinnegan, he will be able to summon the Ten Tails Husk. I pointed this out to Hamura. Uncle, I have analyzed the seal completely and found out that it isn't completely sealed shut. Is this intentional? What? You've analyzed the seal? It's barely been three hours, how did you do it Shun? Hamura asked in astonishment. What? Three hours? How did time pass so quickly? I understood his surprise but what I didn't understand was how time could fly without me noticing. I expected to analyze this seal within an hour or so. I didn't think it'll take this long I continued. Hamura's like twitched. I wonder why. I am barely stating the truth. Shun, did you really analyze the seal just now? Hamura asked again. Yeah. It's quite interesting. I was so engrossed that I didn't notice that time was flying I said. That's not the point. I expected you to give up at least studying it for close to a week or so. How advanced are your studies on sealing? From what I remember, brother said none of his children had a talent for it. You came later on, but how did you learn sealing techniques to this extent? This is the most advanced seal we have ever come up with Hamura said, sounding flustered. 
I can't blame him though. It must be weird seeing the one thing you invented being used more fluently than you. They may have invented sealing techniques but I have a broader horizon. Not to mention me, even the future Uzumaki clan perfected sealing to the point of even contracting the Shinigami. It's all about the point of view. Hagoromo and Hamura created this seal in their time of hardship and after its creation, there wasn't any need for them to create any other seal so they became somewhat complacent. Hamura may have had a more in-depth study on sealing as he was able to create a portal up here and a subspace connecting both places but he still created it as it was a necessity. I also studied seals because I know how important they will be in the future. I initially wanted to use seals to harness energy ergo my desire to study it. Combined with all my knowledge from different worlds out there, I could become a formation deity or something if I was in a cultivation world with time. Ha, uh, uncle, I am the only one that can use sealing techniques. Indra and Ashura can't handle the procedure. As I told Hokuki yesterday, apart from you and father, I could probably say I am the best in seals in this world I say with pride. When it comes to seals, I could be the best as of now, but I know the Atsutsukis are way ahead when it comes to seals. I think their technology is even focused on seals, to the point where they can download their DNA as data into a new host with the help of the Kama Seal. I can be able to use my knowledge to surpass them but I am not there yet. I should still have a long way to go. I shouldn't be complacent. With time, I could even create a seal to create a living being. It is possible with runes so it should be possible with seals. We had some small talk about the use of seals and after that, I asked about what seals he used to make this place habitable. With that question, he started explaining the seals behind the moon. Chapter 41, Time Skip AMD Crush The sound of metal clashing against metal could be heard through the clearing. Flashes of light and a shower of sharks appeared and disappeared all around as two combatants clashed in a fierce battle. The constant exchange carried on until one of the two rival fighters stopped their assault. He then took in a deep breath before he started gathering chakra in his hand before quickly releasing it toward his opponent, who gracefully weaved between each shot and gradually closed the distance between both of them. Then, in a flash, the second fighter appeared in front of the first with his sword outstretched, mere millimeters away from the neck of the first. Ha, Shun. You aren't taking it easy on me at all, are you? Hokuki sighed and said. Well, that was our agreement when you asked me to teach you, you know? Plus, you've gotten better these past two years I said. And I get to practice sealing with Hanami after our training so don't think too much about it. With you drilling me every single day coupled with the seals on me, I should reach your previous level in no time, right? He asked seriously. Hokuki is really talented, I must say. He is gifted in close combat and kenjutsu. Coupled with his Byakugan, he doesn't have any blind spots. I only beat him due to my speed. Well, yeah, but you still have ways to go. Plus, purely natural energy is abundant up here, so it shouldn't be long. All right, off you go. I shouldn't keep Hinami waiting long. Ha, huh, I see someone is in a hurry. While I wasn't watching, it feels like my little sister is being stolen from me. Surely, they do grow up fast Hokuki said with a somewhat smug smile while wiping off a fake tear from his pupil less I like he is the parent or something. I immediately flash and punched him in the head only for him to evade. My cheeks had a slight red tint. I tried not to think too much about this issue these past two years but it seems the harder that I try to do that, the more it backfires on me. Ha, huh, don't mind it Shun, I'm sure my sister finds your presence comforting as well. She seems to have more energy in her these past two years you've been here. Hokuki said. For some reason, I felt excited hearing him say this but I remained composed. I guess it's part of my charm I boasted. Seems like you're both having fun and elder brother, Shun a voice called out from behind me. I turn around to greet the woman who approached, Hinami, how are you doing this lovely morning? I called out with a smile on my face. Oh, you know me, just taking it slow, she said as she sauntered over. Father wanted to call for you, Shun, so I volunteered to come pick you up. Oh? I responded a bit surprised. What could he need me for, any task down on earth or something that requires my immediate help? 
I don't know, but after father went down to meet uncle and came back, he immediately asked for your presence. It may be important as it concerns our cousins. She responded. All right then, shall we, I said. I wonder what the problem is now. Hamira is always laid back and doesn't even interfere in what goes on up here not to mention what goes on down on earth. He is similar to Hagoromo in this sense. But it is fortunate that he doesn't have a Zetsu whispering things in his children's ears. It's been two years since I came to the moon. After the first day of analyzing Kaguta's seal, I spent the remaining time studying Hamura's dimensional seal. The method he used to create the subspace and the habitable environment on the moon is genius. Unlike my method of teleporting which has to do with connecting two origin points and moving from one point to the other instantly, his is like connecting two points with a medium in between. I have science backing up my method, but he created his without any foundational knowledge, just from his own imagination. If that ain't genius, I don't know what is. My definition of genius is not being naturally talented, no, it's the ability to see what other people are doing and innovate on it. That's genius. But Hamura created his without seeing or knowing anything. After the first week of staying here, I had already accomplished my aim of coming here but I was reluctant to leave. I had normal conversations with Hokuki but am always nervous when speaking with Hinami. It took a lot to be able to look her in the eye and talk calmly. I had to approach Hokuki and use him as a source of information to know more about Hinami. He wasn't guarded at all and was quite cooperative. With time we became close friends and he even asked to be taught how to fight. I was going to accept but I decided to include Hinami in the training and other to spend more time with her. The training was harsh and Hinami gave up quite easily. I wasn't bothered about it, in fact, I would have suggested she gave up because I could stand the look of pain on her face. She decided to watch us and cheer whenever we're training. Later on, I asked if she was interested in seals and she said yes. With that, I decided to teach her more about seals after training with Hokuki. Luckily, she wasn't a fast learner but she was dedicated to the art. Her form when writing with a brush was perfect, but she wasn't easy still. I guess it runs in the family, similar to Windra and Ashura, although unlike them, she didn't give up. During our lessons, I used the opportunity to teach her some common science and simple laws that govern the physical world and can be used in seals. Once, she asked how I knew all these things, I shamelessly said I discovered them. Not like that's a lie, I did discover them, in this world that is. It's been a very eventful two years and surprisingly, I wasn't bothered by what could happen to Indra and Ashura during this time. I no longer feel the need to even go back to Earth. Now I wonder what has happened. I don't have a sense of foreboding or anything of the sort so it shouldn't be that serious. During our walk home, I noticed that Hinami was quite happy for some reason. I didn't want to spoil her mood so I didn't ask her. As we walked, she started humming a song I taught her from the memories of my past life. After several minutes of walking, we arrived home. I noticed something different from before. There seems to be an abundance of natural energy for some reason. I noticed Hamura and went toward him. Uncle, I heard you were looking for me. Ah, Shun, you won't believe what happened, he said excitedly. Now that wasn't what I was expecting. I was honestly expecting something about Ashura and Indra but I kept silent and let him continue. It worked, I managed to create the thing you said. It's done, it took me a long time to create it but I did it. It's finally done he continued. What is? I ask. Remember when you said to me to create that thing, Hamura explained. The greenhouse thing. I finally managed to do it. It took me a while but after consulting my brother and little Ashura, I managed to come up with a hypothesis and it works. Now there can be vegetation up here though it wouldn't cover a large area he finished. Oh? Did you manage to do it already? Didn't you say that it would be naturally impossible to complete within a few years? How come you've done it already? I was genuinely curious. I could have done it as I am now within a few weeks. I bet I could even create vegetation on a dead planet if I put in an effort. 
Well, at first I thought it couldn't be done in a few years, but I remember you saying something about Ashura's would release so I went down to consult both brother and Ashura. Previously I could also manipulate my chakra to create some trees but they die in seconds so I went to study how trees naturally grow and I've finally done it Hamira explained excitedly. I did mention that trees are important to life and without the special air that comes out from trees, the place wouldn't be conducive for a normal human to live. I offhandedly explained what a greenhouse is and said that it would be nice if it was here. Hamira took it upon himself to make it happen, after all, everything I have said has been proven to be true when it comes to science stuff. He explained that he noticed that trees secrete special energy and receive special energy from the sun and the earth. He then created a seal that could gather the said energy and infuse them in an area where the trees would grow. In short, he created a special seal that could draw in sunlight energy and also the natural energy generated from the ground. The reason he called me was for me to check the work. I felt kind of pissed off. He could have picked a better time but he just had to pick the period I have to spend time with Hinami. Oomph, he should be grateful he is my uncle, if not. After inspecting it, I notice a few flaws such as there is no cycle. It was merely one-way traffic for the energy coming in and no energy is being released. After a few tweaks here and there it was complete. In a few months, the moon will give birth to its first ever man-made natural tree. I don't know a better name to give it. Maybe future generations will give it a better name. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. And, Hamura's Tensegan does not have a wood release, it's a golem-like creature. Chapter 42, Confession The revised seal I created was able to draw in the required energy to ensure the life of any tree is conserved, though specified trees would need specific soil composition I will leave that to Hamura to figure out. While we were working, the whole family came together to watch as this was a groundbreaking project. Not long after, the whole thing was set up. The only thing remaining was finding the specific plant life that can survive in this environment, and a water source. Those can be handled by Hamira, it shouldn't be that difficult. Well, congratulations on the successful completion of the first ever greenhouse, uncle, I say. Ha, this isn't only my effort shun. Two had a hand to play in it as well Hamira said modestly. No need for that uncle, I only brought up the idea and you made it possible. You should be proud I retorted. And you perfected it too, Hamura said. If you say so uncle, but you be aware that plants still need water to grow, so don't forget to work on that, I said, diverting the topic slightly. I am fully aware of that. It shouldn't be that difficult to create and implement. Hmm. So does this mean we can have our own plantations up here now, an excited voice said from the side. Hanami was quite excited about the prospect of having trees on the moon. I found she likes spending her time in the fields whenever we go down to earth. Well yes, but there are a few things left to perfect. Give it a few months, I am sure uncle would make it possible I said. Hmm. Why do you sound like you won't be around for that? It can't be that you're planning on leaving, can it? Hinami asked with squinted eyes. I suddenly felt a chill run down my spine. For some reason, I felt that she was angry and I didn't know the reason. Ha! Huh? Yeah, I plan on leaving. I initially came here to learn from uncle and I am done with that. I feel like I have overstayed my welcome I said, looking down, a little bit reluctant. Looking up at her again, I smiled and said, why? Could it be you'll miss me? The penetrating look she gave me was instantly erased as her face lit up and flushed, becoming entirely bright pink. It was weird and beautiful at the same time considering how pale she was. It was a novel experience for me, all could think of at that moment was that she was incredibly cute. Wah wah wah. What do you mean? Oomph, Hinami panicked there a little bit before turning around and running out from there with her face in her hands. What exactly is happening right now I yelled, holding my hands out as if to somehow stop her like I was Nagato. Real smooth there, Shun Hokuki said from the side with slight annoyance in his tone. Wait, is this really what I think it is? Is it happening? I asked aloud to no one in particular. It was too shocking. 
I have never been in this kind of situation before. I usually know what people around me are feeling at any given time as far as I want to know, but this is new. I had zero clue Hinami might develop a romantic interest in me. I have been with her for two whole years. I immediately started replaying all my memories with her of these two years in an attempt to see how long this has been going on for. A few seconds later, I looked at Hamira and tried to explain myself as I was worried he may not like the fact his daughter is into me, but I couldn't come up with words as my mind was currently in a mess. I, uh. Should you really be talking to me right now, Shun? He asks with a kind smile, but I could tell it was threatening in a way. I didn't say anything more, after that, I turned around and sprinted toward where I felt Hanami was. Sigh, so the time has finally come, Hanami said with a smile. Poof. If he makes my daughter any sadder than she is, I will make him pay. Hamura said. I ran. I kept running, chasing after the image of the woman I have liked since coming to this world. While I ran, my mind was flooded with many scenarios of the past and how it should have been obvious. I didn't know what to say if I caught up, I momentarily forgot I could teleport and reach her in an instant. Hey Hinami, let's talk nah, that's cringe. I love you, please go out with me, nah, that might be a good way to scare her off a bit. Come with me, let fine live together, I thought while shaking my head with reddened cheeks. I had embarrassed myself thinking of such corny lines. Wah! -ah. I could die of cringe right now I yelled in my mind before I came to an abrupt stop in front of a gate-like portal. I paused for a moment seeing it floating there. Its existence means that Hinami has fled to Earth right now. Without much hesitation, I flashed and appeared in a familiar subspace. Running through there I saw another floating gate. Entering the gate once more, I appeared in an open field on Earth. I closed my eyes and stretched my spirit sense as far as I could. I felt her presence in an isolated forest far from where I was. The place was saturated with natural energy. I stopped realizing where she was right now. I created that place a few weeks after coming to live on the moon. I found out she loved the vegetation on Earth a lot, so as a means to show off, I used my wood style to create a forest, a pond, and a small park filled with different kinds of flowers I have come across. She fell in love with the place and so did I. Although I made the place to show off, it turned out very beautiful so it became our secret spot. Though later on, it became more than that for her so I covered that area with invisibility seal and illusion seal, so from now until the end of time, nobody will find this place unless they are more skillful than me when it comes to seals. I felt like slapping myself for not realizing a lot of things previously. Arriving at the entrance, I noticed that access has been denied to me, but I could still teleport inside. She must have either forgotten or known but didn't forbid it. I have trained and done a lot of things with both Hinami and Hokuki these two years so I knew their thinking process to a certain extent. Not daring to immediately teleport to where she is, I gradually walked toward her position. Sitting beside the pond, was the most beautiful girl in the world. The black-haired and white-eyed beauty sat, hugging her knees with her face hidden behind her knees, facing downwards. I felt a great deal of both relief and a twinge of sadness as I approached. I was about to say something when I heard her mumbling to herself, stupid. Why did I run? He must be laughing at me now. Probably thinks I am weird Hinami muttered while hugging her legs tightly. I don't think that at all, I said as I reached her. Hinami's head shot up in surprise, shock written all over her face. She clearly didn't feel my approach. I didn't allow her to answer my comment as I continued with what I had to say. In fact, I think your flustered face is incredibly cute. Normally, you are already very beautiful, but that was the most adorable I have ever seen I stated, bearing my honest feeling to her. CCCC cute? Hinami stammered a bit, holding her cheeks in her hands which were now bright red. Yup, and you are continuing to be even more adorable now, I said walking past her and sitting down behind her facing the pond. Hinami seeing what I was doing, adjusted herself with me. We were now sitting, facing away from each other resting our backs against each other while we both thought of this situation in silence. After a few moments like this, I said, this place is beautiful don't you think? 
She didn't say anything, allowing me to continue, I created it with you in mind remember? Before I went up to the moon, I was just the normal boy, filled with curiosity and seeking knowledge of this world. From the moment I could think my own thoughts, the only thing I have been pursuing was strength. After I gained access to chakra, I have been researching it. Its uses, how it could be manipulated more effectively, and how it affects the world. I learned the things could learn, I also got interested in seals as they were the easiest way to use the energy of the world without much stress. By the time I got strong, I didn't know what to use this strength to do, I didn't have any close friends except for Indra and Ashura, but I didn't have someone to confide in and I never needed one. I was proud of my strength but as I learned from my father, there are things strength can't solve. Out of curiosity, I decided to go up to the moon and meet uncle and learn about the seal up there. Hinami, I am not going to lie, I am quite selfish and a little bit immature I paused as I thought hell, before even reincarnating, I was a total loser without any direction. I then turned around and faced her and continued and then I met you. I fell in love at first sight, I felt like I found a missing piece of my heart. Holding her hands in my hands, I continued loving you as one of the best things that has ever happened to me. I am not and will never be ashamed of that. Hinami, you are one of the kindest, most caring, and most reliable women I have ever met. You are absolutely beautiful, the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. I am not talking about only your appearance, I am also talking about that bright and cheerful side of you that captured my heart. I paused for Eamon to allow my words to sink in before I continue, and no one, not even herself is allowed to call the woman I love weird. Do you understand me? I said seriously. Hinami was completely flabbergasted by my speech but was still blushing, regardless of how cringy my words were, I want you to apologize, say sorry to yourself I commanded. Hinami chuckled to herself while covering her mouth with her cupped hands. Seeing that put my heart at ease and I unconsciously smiled. Her mood had lightened after that and she decided to play along, alright then. Good, then repeat after me, I commanded lightheartedly, I am sorry Hinami for calling you weird. I am sorry Hinami for calling you here weird, she repeated with a cheerful smile on her face. I will never do it again. I will never do it again. Hinami is a beautiful angel. Hinami is a beautiful angel. And Shan loves her. A and Shan LL loves her, she repeated hesitantly. A mischievous glint passed through my mind as I said. Hinami wants some loving, I said with a confident look and a slight blush on my face. And Hinami won no D deserves some L loving Hinami hesitated slightly but repeated it with a deep blush, changing me quite slightly, and gaining confidence out of nowhere. Well if you say so, we embraced each other tightly as I went for a kiss. As our lips met for the kiss, a deep shock passed through our bodies, temporarily stunning both of us before we continued on our deep makeout session. The two of us began to melt into each other's embrace as we let our minds go blank for a moment as we let our tongues wrestle, neither gaining domination over the other. After what felt like a long time, we separated to catch our breath. Not me though, just Hinami. I felt she needed to catch her breath for a while. I could go on for hours without stopping if possible. Both our faces were burning bright red with embarrassment. We have fallen over during the course of the makeout with Hinami lying on the soft grass underneath me. Gee good, now that we have done this far, two better not back out on me. We are partners from now on I said a bit shyly. I wasn't professional when it comes to things like these. Hinami smiled while putting her hands behind my head and hanging low in my neck, looking into my eyes she said. Right back at you. Third POV. You think we should stop watching now, father? Hokuki said while looking at a screen on a water-like surface with a blush on his cheeks. Yeah. That's a little bit, intense Hanami said from the side. Good for them. But that bastard Shun. How dare he assault my daughter in my face, I will need to teach him a lesson Hamura said angrily while looking at the screen intensely. One could see that there was a smile on his face although his eyes told a different story. Dear, you do know you are the one spying on them right? Hanami said with a smile on her lips. She is already old enough to make her decisions, don't you think? She continued with a chilly aura around her. 
Oomph, even then, how could he do that to my Himani? Hamura said and mumbled. Hokuki stood at the side and looked at all these with a smile on his face. One could tell he was really happy with the current development. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Longest chapter yet. I don't know how y'all will like the romance stuff that went on in this chapter, but I tried my best victory hand victory hand. Chapter 43, Leaving. You two look like you had fun, Hokuki said smugly as Hinami and I walked back in through the portal leading to Earth. Wa-Hinami started becoming flustered by the comment, before turning her head away with slightly red cheeks. I simply scratched the back of my hair, running my fingers through my now very messed up hair with a slight blush on my face. Well, let's just say today was a very good day and leave it at that, I said with a large smile and laughed awkwardly. Hanami gave me a nudge with her elbow to shut me up while Hanami was smiling gracefully. Isn't that nice Hanami, you've finally grown up. Congrats Hamura muttered under his breath, for some reason, he doesn't seem like his usual self. After heckling for a while, I noticed that Hanami was now coming out of her shyness and being less bashful about our relationship and was now speaking normally again despite the minute teasing from time to time. I suddenly had a mischievous idea and a wide grin appeared on my face. Hokuki noticing my smile had an idea of the foolish thing I was about to do and gave a similar grin. I snuck up behind Hinami while she was talking with her mother and had her back toward me. I quickly put my hands around her and pulled her into my embrace. I could so easily as she was smaller than me and especially as she was caught off guard. Ah, shun, quiet it. Everyone is looking at us, Hinami pleaded and then whispered, we can do this more later. Unfortunately, she seemed to have forgotten that everyone here was enhanced in one way or another and had superior senses and heard her clearly. Oh ho! Hanami was the first to comment, so you are so much more passionate with Shun behind closed doors, huh? Hanami was making cute noises while burying her head in my chest for a moment before I quickly spun her around, kind of showing her off. Putting her down and holding her firmly so that she wouldn't run away, I said, everyone, I would like to ask for Hanami's hand in marriage, trying to ooze as much confidence as possible. Why 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 you? You idiot. Hanami elbowed me in my stomach hard, which hurt for some unknown reason, and ran away. I keeled over and spat out a mouthful of blood. Cough, I mean saliva. Worth it and lay on the ground. Are you sure you want to leave? There are still a lot of things that will need your attention up here, you know? Hamura asked as the entire family stood in front of the portal that will take me down to Earth. I am sure. I need to see places, I don't feel comfortable staying here, knowing that there are still places I haven't seen yet. As for things that need my attention, Hokuki is plenty strong already, he just needs to find the element that suits him more and then create his forms. You on the other hand don't even need me here, your seals are already good as it is, even if they aren't, it's just a matter of trying again and again until you find the perfect formula. I know you got this I replied with a smile. Sigh. You know too much already, it makes me feel old now Hamura said. But you are old already, old man, I said with a chuckle. We all laughed at that and I joined them. I then realized Hokuki held out his hands to me. I looked at it for a moment before smiling and shaking it. We look each other in the eye while wishing each other well and promising to meet again with our eyes, or at least that's what I thought we were doing. Well anyway, I am sure you and Hinami couldn't get all lovey-dovey while inside the house. Gotta have time for yourselves, right? He teased. Brother Hinami shouted in a complaint from behind me. Hokuki grinned before releasing my hands. Hanami came forward and hugged Hanami and said, take care of yourself out there and take care of Shun. There isn't much danger now but still take care, hmm? Yes mother, Hanami said with a nod. Hamura on the other hand came toward me and said solemnly. Look, Shun, you better take care of my daughter, I know you want to see new things and she wants to follow you, but still, be careful, don't harm her in any way, you got it? Yes uncle, I would never harm her. I said with determination. It's been roughly a month since I asked Hanami out and basically proposed in front of the entire family. Unlike in my previous world, some customs are not yet in effect here, 
so even when I did it like that it was still okay. After a while of giving our farewells and exchanging advice and stuff, I left together with Hinami. When the heat of the confession cooled off, she approached me and asked if I was still leaving, and I told her I would, but I would spend more time with her and can even visit her anytime. All she had to do was put her chakra in a seal I gave her and I would appear instantly. She didn't like that idea and threw a minor tantrum until I asked her what she wanted and she said she would follow me. According to her, he also wanted to see the world in all its glory, she has been either on the moon or in that small human settlement, ayo she has always yearned to see more places around the world. I accepted happily as I wouldn't be bored or alone anymore. I could also visit home and introduce her to Hagoromo and Ashura. After a while, we bid farewell to them and left through the portal. This place is going to be boring for a while, Okuki said. Yeah, Hanami said and Hamura nodded. Well, he has been here for two years or so and had made all of us get used to him. Leaving like this will always leave a hole, Hamura said. Although he was angry at Shun for taking his daughter away, he was still happy for them. Shun makes his daughter smile more and they are both happy, so there isn't much to lose. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Sorry guys. This is a short chapter, I had a lot of things going on and might even reduce the release frequency. Thanks for your power stones and support. Chapter 44, Journey It has been two weeks since we left the moon. I had the idea of introducing Hanami to Hagoromo, Indra, and Ashura. Hagoromo and Ashura cause they are closer in one place, and Indra because he is still family. I initially wanted to teleport to the village and be done with it but Hinami wanted to enjoy the process of traveling. According to her, traveling like this and seeing plants, water bodies, and even clouds evokes a new feeling in her. She has not had the chance to see the world for what it is and has only seen it as far as Hamira allows her. She can't particularly disobey her father, after all, this is way back in time and children don't even think of going against their parents. Indra is another issue altogether. During the journey, we did and experienced enough things. When we first saw a long river, she initially attempted swimming and almost drowned. I then had to teach her how to swim. I also taught her how to walk on water but there wasn't much to teach as she got it after three tries. We also trained in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Although she doesn't like getting hurt, she still enjoys fighting as she sees it as a unique dance and is beautiful to watch and perform. I guess this is what all first martial artists may think at first until a generation later, their art is used to hurt others. Well, who am I to judge? I have already developed different methods of fighting and thrown their manuals to different parts of the world, plus their indestructibility due to the seals I put on them, they won't get destroyed due to time. At her request, we spared and I decided to teach her the Chinese Tai Chi stance and develop the gentle fist to go with it. The gentle fist is not really gentle per se. I wonder why it was named so. The series of palm strikes I taught her was anything but gentle. This gentle fist was already a degraded version of Kagaya's vacuum palm, so I don't see the gentleness there. I'll leave the naming to Hanami though. The number of strikes she can use were increasing steadily but she couldn't go past the 128 strikes. Every strike is meant to strike at the opponent's ten kestas making it 351. Meaning that after the 256th strike, one has to strike 105 times at a go. Although she could reach the 120 right strikes, her stamina can't go past that. At first, I wondered if it was due to chakra capacity, but I ruled that option out and then thought to look at her chakra control, but it had nothing to do with that too. That was when I then noticed her lack of stamina. I mentioned that we should work on her stamina and she said it will be a pain and it's stressful. I wanted to insist but her pout made me shelf that idea. With that bottleneck in place, I spent time teaching her about seals. During my lessons, I used my modern knowledge to make her understand things easier. I used the laws of physics and chemistry to teach her how the world operates and how they could be applied to seals and techniques. I then also explained some biological terms I know about and some laws of biology and then culminated all of them into how they govern nature. She was odd at my knowledge and always listens with rapt attention anytime I start teaching her these things. 
I also applied them practically to show her proof. I used my gravity manipulation to show her how normal gravity works and how to counteract it and also use it to our advantage. I also showed her how space manipulation and gravity manipulation could be misjudged as the same and how to use one to counter the other. Truthfully, I don't see how this knowledge will help her during this time, but I still decided to teach her. My policy has always been to have something and not need it than to need something and not have it. Whenever we are not talking about fighting techniques, seals, or laws, I use that time to teach her some psychological bullshits I have read or watched from novels or anime. I know for a fact that humans are born inherently good, but the environment they grow in dictates how they grow up. So with that in mind, I didn't push any idea that I haven't verified yet. I also talked more in-depth about the principles behind cultivation and how helpful they can be. I wanted to find a way to make her immortal like me now. I don't know about the future, but as of now, I wouldn't want to lose her. A month later, we came across the village I was in close to four years ago. The village was still looking as prosperous as I left the place but I noticed some minor changes. Though I didn't enter, my spiritual sense captured what was going on there. The sight brought a little smile to my face. They were a lot more energetic than before. Little Rhea back then was now almost mature looking. Physically, she looked like a 14 to 15 year old girl, but I knew she was barely 12. I initially thought of just passing them by but Hinami, seeing my smile knew that I was close to them and urged me to go in. Reluctantly, we entered the village. The village fence I constructed with my wood release was still standing and I could still feel traces of my chakra in it. It also seems like the chakra residue made the soul a lot more fertile. As we entered the village, I see them looking at us weirdly. I was expecting them to recognize me at least, but their confused stare made me feel weirded out. I sighted some of the boys I worked with at the farm and waved at them but they didn't wave back. Seeing that, I was dumbfounded. I then shouted at them. Hey, it's me Sean. What's going on with you all? They then stopped and faced me, still looking at me suspiciously, one of them, whom I can't recall his name asked, how are we to know you're Sean? For all we know, Shun has black hair and is blindfolded. And from what we are seeing, you have white hair, and there is no blindfold. Care to explain? After hearing that, I was shocked. So that's what is going on. Even Hinami was laughing to the side when she saw my expression. She knew immediately what was going on. When I first met them on the moon, I was also on my black hair and blindfold. I showed them my white hair there and then later stopped wearing my blindfold after much consideration. Aside from looking cool, the blindfold doesn't help much. Unlike Gojo, my brain could process everything I see with my eyes, so I didn't need the blindfold to reduce any form of strain. I then laughed at myself and brought out my blindfold and tied it over my eyes while using transformation to change my hair back to how it was before, that is black. So? What do you think now? Ha? Huh? I asked with a cheeky smile I developed over the two years on the moon. Oh? So you really are Shun? It has been a long time man. What have you been up to all these years one of them asked. Ha, huh? well you know, I've been here and there I answered. That isn't a place and to know it, the boy laughed. By then the suspicion around me has already been removed slightly. I say slightly cause some were still looking at me suspiciously. One of them was a girl that looked 14 to 15 years of age. Yeah, you guessed right, it was Rhea. Looking in her direction, I said, aren't you going to greet your big brother, little Rhea? Hearing me and seeing me look in her direction, she scoffed and said, "Humph, you're not my big brother. If you are big brother, prove it. Saying that she brought out the communication token I made and gave her and showed me. She then said, big brother should have this type of token. Show it to me and I'll believe you. I was shocked and felt a little guilty seeing the token because honestly speaking, I have never once spoken to her on that communication token. Perhaps I didn't hold much feeling at the time and thought of them all as characters or something. Taking off my blindfold once more I look at Rhea with my eyes this time and using my chakra sense, I could see and sense many emotions in her eyes. I could feel her sadness, hope, anger, and even betrayal. 
I knew why she would feel all these emotions and I felt even more guilty. It's been close to three years now since I gave her that communication token and promised to speak with her often. But not only did I not talk with her, I even forgot about her for a good while. I knew that should have misplaced that token, she wouldn't believe it no matter what. She was likely clinging to this token as a last emotional attachment to me. Without that, she won't have anything to remember me by. Looking into my spatial ring with my spirit since I found the token at the edge of the space there, meaning that I likely placed it there to be forgotten. With a sad sigh, O brought out the token and showed it to Rhea. Seeing the token, she started crying, and seemingly wanting to be sure that I wasn't deceiving her, she poured her chakra into the token like I taught her and said, Big Brother Shun, her voice almost breaking. Everyone around us heard the voice from my token, but I still poured chakra inside and replied, Hello little Rhea. Hearing my voice from her token, she ran up to me and hugged me while crying. Chapter 45, Reunions Big Brother Rhea hugged me while crying profusely. Her hands clung to me as I thought I would disappear the very next instant or leave her again. At that moment, I could feel various emotions washing off of her but the most prominent ones were relief and happiness. I am back little Rhea, I said with a sad smile. Although the current Rhea was already tall enough to be called a young lady, she was still a little girl in my eyes. Hinami noticed the atmosphere was silent and was looking at me like I did something very bad. I couldn't get a read on what she was feeling but I could see she felt sad for the girl even though she doesn't know the full story. Thinking about this, I felt even more disappointed in myself. I didn't even tell Hinami about this place or Rhea at all. That goes to show how I treated this place as irrelevant subconsciously. The villagers on the other hand stopped everything they were doing and looked at us, mostly Rhea though with comforting eyes while some looked at me with clear hostility. I knew their hostility was because of hurting Rhea but I could feel a different one, was it jealousy? Hmm, it seems like someone is misunderstanding our hug as a show of deep affection. Not like I care though, if anyone tries harming Rhea, I'ma let them feel some pain. I used my chakra to soothe Rhea and make her calm down. After a while, she finally controlled herself though she still hugged me tightly. I had to pet her out of myself and let her hold my hands as consolation. With that done, I then waved at the villagers once more and said, sorry for the trouble guys. Hushun you made our village sunshine cry, you think it's easy to let go with just a sorry? Yeah, do you know how much little Rhea has missed you? She even goes outside the village sometimes and talks to that thing you gave her. M.H. Hum. You have to apologize properly and make it up to her or else. The villagers came out of their stupor and began clamoring that I gave Rhea a proper apology. I could feel they were angry with me and also relieved that Rhea wouldn't have to feel lonely as before. I also noticed that they weren't really angry. Ha, huh, for sure. It was my mistake. I will take of her well looking toward Rhea and bending down to reach her height, I said, little Rhea, don't worry, I won't ask for forgiveness now, so how about I spend some time here with you, later, I will ask you to forgive me. Rhea nodded at the suggestion cutely her eyes still puffy from crying earlier. With that, the villagers seemed to have mellowed down and they all had happy smiles on their faces. So how have you lot been? It's been like three years since I last saw you guys I asked, changing the topic. Ah, uh, well, we've been doing well. Our lands seem to have more yield than before after you left. Yeah, there was even less spoiled produce. And thanks to you giving us chakra, there is even less sickness and fatigue than before. The villagers responded happily. Good good, though I think it's all thanks to your hard work. So don't be modest about it I said, but before we could continue the discussion, I decided to introduce Hinami to them. Pulling her toward me, I said to the villagers. This here is Hinami, my wife. Hope you all will take care of her. I could see shades of red on her cheeks as I introduced her as my wife but she didn't hate it so all is good. Hinami then bowed gracefully and said, nice to meet you all, please take care of me. I wonder why she has to be formal about the introduction but I guess that's part of her charm. Wow, what a beauty. Shun, you got lucky marrying such a beautiful lady one villager said. Searching my memory, I found out his name was Itami. 
He was a young man in his late twenties, although he looks younger now, it must be due to the chakra refinement and fieldwork. Ah, thanks, I got really lucky, I said while grinning ear to ear. Some of the guys came and chatted with us for some time, and even the ladies who were always reserved around me came forward to greet Hinami, Rhea included. I guess seeing that she is a girl made them approach her. I really may have treated some people really badly in the past. After some time chatting and getting to know ourselves better, I excused myself, and together with Hinami and Rhea, we went towards the center of the village where Nanami lives. She is the oldest person in this village and the village chief so to say, so I got to greet her at the very least. Walking through the village, I noticed that the houses that I built for the villagers were still standing without any sign of decay. Must be the effect of my wood release. If care is not taken, this village might really give birth to a proper shinobi clan in a few years. Though I wouldn't like to see that, time can change a lot of things. Not long after we reached Nanami's house, I could feel another chakra signature inside the house. That must be you. Knocking slightly on the door, I heard, who is it? Rhea beat me to it as she shouted excitedly, Grandma, open up, big brother Shun came back. I heard some noises before someone opened the door and it was you. Yo I greeted with my left hand raised, anime style. You looked at me with a shocked expression before it turned into a smile. He then punched me in the chest lightly and said, Welcome back. Ha? Huh? Is that you Shun? I heard an aged voice from behind you, and from his back came Nanami. She didn't look as old as she was on my first trip here. She looked like someone in her late fifties unlike the aged grandma that looked close to the grave the last time I came here. Hmm. She looked at me suspiciously. Maybe she felt I was insulting her. I hope not. I felt someone was cursing me just now she muttered under her breath, but I still heard it loud and clear. Ah, Grandma, it's been some time since we last met. Good to see you're still as healthy as ever I said with a laugh to shift her attention. Ah, yes Shun. Wait, were you hoping I would be in bad health or something? What? No, far from that. I am pleased to see you still looking healthy and, as ever I said. Damn. This woman wasn't like this the last time I was here. Could it be due to regaining a little bit of her youth and then her hormones, whatever they are, are now becoming active? Hmm, good for you then. Come in and make yourself comfortable. So you finally decided to come back. How have you been? She asked while directing us inside the house. Well, I've been here and there. I continued my journey after leaving here and have been going places I said, not specifying anything. Hmm, at least you decided to come back, little Rhea was really sad you know, she said. Yes, I know and I plan on making it up to her. I said, and then introduced Hinami to her, and this here is Hinami, my wife. Oh, what a beautiful young lady, I guess you two do compliment each other, she said. Thanks for the praise, old lady, we do really compliment each other, I said with a laugh. How have you been these past few years? No problems whatsoever I hope? I asked. Oh, all has been well. The things you taught us have been useful. She then went on to tell me how they have used their chakra to improvise in many aspects, both in what I have taught them previously and what they discovered themselves. One thing I noticed is that although they apply chakra in almost everything they do, like applying it on their arms and legs when working, no one has discovered how to use ninjutsu. After some time spent catching up, she excused herself leaving us with you to talk as we were in the same age grade. You now has an athletic build that would put most sportsmen to shame. Although he should be the same age as me, which is 19, he looks like someone in his early 20s. Their hard work really does pay off. I am looking forward to what their future would be like. Sometime later, we left the house and headed toward the area I built my house the last time I was here, and surprisingly, the house still remained intact, not even weeds around it or dust inside it. Hmm, I guess someone took care of it for me while I was home, I wonder who that might be, I mumbled inaudibly but still loud enough for Hinami and Rhea to hear. I then sensed Rhea's emotion fluctuating from its former happiness to pride and then back again. She must have been taking care of the house these past years. Sigh, 
What a bad brother I was, huh? I then used my free hand to pat her head while swearing to myself internally that I would try my possible best to make up for the lost time and also make her as happy as possible.